subscribe to m code and ring the notification bell to get the latest content so now let's talk about the rdd which is resilient distributed data set which is the integral and a core component of apache spark api so rdds are nothing but the core abstraction in apache spark and it represents the data set which can be the immutable and the distributed collections of the objects so definitely as the name suggests it is immutable and also it is distributed so this makes the rdd resilient which means that it allows the recover failure because it is got distributed across the cluster and it is ready to be processed in a parallel manner so that's why rdds are like the core component of apache spark so you may not have heard about rdds because if you are dealing with the structured data all the time and most of you guys like 90% of the people only deal with the structured data so on that there is another api which is known as data frame which is also very popular concept so data frames are nowadays used and preferred over the rdds because working with data frame is very simple than the rdds but you should know about the basics of rdd at least because we are going to only see the data frames because they are widely used in the data community right now but first let's talk about the properties of the rdd so first of all rdds are immutable so immutable means they cannot be changed once they are created but you can able to create another rdd using the previous one but you cannot change it which makes it very fault tolerant so fault tolerant means they are ready for disaster recovery or we can say failure recovery so that's why it ensures that your data will not get lost and also it can be operated in parallel across the cluster so these are distributed across the cluster like we have seen in the hdfs like our file gets split down and stored and also it also has the fault tolerance that means that there are the replicas of the same file which are present on many clusters so it totally depends on the replication factor so similarly rtds are also stored in such a way that it will dis recover from the failures and also we have like different operations we can do on top of the rdd but there are like two parts of this operations so the first operation is nothing but the transformation so transformation which means that we are transforming the data in such a way that it will get us in the required format so we have the map we have the filter we have the flat map there are different transformations which are present in rdd and also we have the actions so action means it returns something like right? it returns the value out of those transformation and the rdds so basically actions are nothing but we can save it as a text we can check the count of the rdd etc etc but also rdd has like two major concept the one is the persistence so basically if you per do the persist operation on any rdd it will take that into memory so that if you have like iterative algorithms or else you need to or you need to execute different different operations on the same rdd then persisting it in the memory will make it very faster and efficient it is similar to cache operations that we are going to see in the upcoming part and also it has the lazy evaluation so lazy evaluation is also very important topic and it is also asked many times in the tech interviews so basically lazy evaluation means spark will not directly transform the way we execute or do any transformation on the rdd it will happen only when certain action is called on top of the data frame or the rdd so basically spark will intentionally delay the data processing so that it has enough time to map and create like the most efficient way of processing that data so basically it will have like the most efficient plan once we have the transformation so once we apply any transformation it will convert it into some plan and that plan is on and that plan is only executed whenever there is a certain action is called like the count operation or if you are saving that as a text file or else we are using a reduce function so these are all the actions 
but when you apply any transformation like map or filter it will not do anything it just creates a plan in such a way that it processes the data very efficiently so that's why if you compare it to hadoop spark has way more data processing capabilities if we talk about the big data so that's it for today i'll see you in the next lecture